So what are my essential tools for railway modelling? Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. And before you switch off, I just want to go through a couple of tools with you that really, really, really are essential. And we're not talking about scalpels and files and stuff like that. But if you work in your railway room, up in your loft or in your shed and you work on your own, these two things are absolutely essential, though they might not be obvious. And the first one is a fire extinguisher. This one goes over there by the door. If the layout catches fire, I need to make a run for it. I'm going to the door. This is by the door. I can grab hold of this, turn around, go back, fight the fire if I can, put it out, stay safe. Second one, a first aid kit. Cheap and cheerful. You should have one of these anyway. It should be in your car or in your caravan or in your kitchen or whatever. But these two things aren't on the uh, kind of model railway tool list, but you shouldn't really be without these. You know, this, these are basic safety items. And especially if you're working, say, in your loft or in your shed on your own and you get in, get in trouble, these are the things you need to grab straight away. OK, let's get back to the real world. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. I notice that actually only about 25% of my viewers do. And also, if you click the little bell icon, then you'll get a notification when the next video is released. Staying with safety, I thought it was worth mentioning three other items that I use. One is breathing apparatus, and this one here happens to be a kind of an upmarket one with dual filters from 3M. I'm not suggesting you buy this by any stretch of the imagination. It's your health. You must make the decision um, of what's best for you. But it fits quite snug. It does up at the back, and to me, if I'm going to use any serious chemicals, then that's the one I go for. If I'm just doing a little bit um, of, say, spraying isopropyl alcohol around the layout, then it's one of these small basic filters. You see them by uh, Oriental cyclists um, riding around Beijing wearing this kind of thing. They're both in 3M, but you make your own choice. And you should buy those before you buy the sprays. Do you see what I mean? You don't go and buy a, um, a spray booth or aerosols and then think, oh, what should I get? I know, I'll get a face mask or I'll just cuff it today. You buy these first, put those into the budget before you kind of make any decisions. Um, and the same is to be said, really, for using cutting discs and anything that generates kind of uh, particles, such as using a Dremel and that kind of thing. And clearly you do need a pair of goggles. And these, again, cheap and cheerful. Um, when you buy a pair of these, if like me, you're stricken at the age of 61 with wearing reading glasses all the time, then make sure you can wear your reading glasses inside the goggles. Otherwise, you won't be able to see what you're doing, really, will you? It kind of makes sense. Um, and also wear goggles when you're soldering and wear the breathing apparatus when you're soldering because you do get, it does spit and obviously the flux and everything else chucks up fumes. And finally, we get the rubber gloves. Um, Obviously, it keeps the chemicals off your hands, all straightforward kind of stuff. If you get it in glue, you know, you can't get it off. You know, I do my nails. You know, it takes hours to get it off my nails. Um, but these are not hot glue gun proof. The hot glue will go through these and it's still quite painful. So you need to rip them off quite quickly. But I do think it's worth paying attention to the serious bits before you embark on buying Dremels and everything else and find the next thing you've got a cornea abrasion or whatever with a little bit of metal stuck in your eye. Back to the first aid kit, really, aren't we? So, where do we go from there? So the next thing to look at is perhaps the environment. And here in my railway room, I am quite fortunate I do have quite a bit of space. But if I'm going to do anything in the house, um, whilst my dying wife is watching Holby and she needs a bit of male company, then I invested in one of these cheap and cheerful kind of uh, humbrol workspaces. It comes with a cutting mat and it's a multi-core mat, so they kind of last a bit longer. Um, and, you know, you can pop your paints in and your paint brushes. Sadly, humbrol didn't make it quite right because they're thin as doesn't really fit. But it's ideal for working on small items, you know, building a, a couple of little uh, kits, um, it's, it's, yeah, it's great, ideal. But if you haven't got much room in your, in your, your shed or your attic or your you know, railway room, then this is the sort of thing that kind of 
keeps it all tidy. So it's something that I do recommend. And I think they retail at around about 20 quid. And I'm going to give Squires um, a plug right through this, uh, this, this video um, because I get a lot of my stuff from there and you will find a link below to squires.com and then it's just a case of um, fathoming your way through their website. But this is a great little workstation. So these little cutting mats obviously come in various shapes and sizes. I think this one is an A4. I have invested previously in a different one and I don't know why I bought a translucent one but that's an A3. I then couldn't find that one so I went and invested in another A3 just for a change just to show my complete stupidity um, but it, it was kind of limiting and I do have quite a big table so I then invested in an A2 and this is the one I use on a regular basis. Um, Buy the multi-core ones, they are more expensive, but they will last longer, but you can see them, they are layered on the edge. And um, I try to keep the, the reverse side clean because when I'm doing a video, I don't really want to show up um, all the, uh, the, the, the matrix squares and measurements and all the rest of it. It makes it easier on the other side. So if you can do the mucky side, do it on there, but try to keep the other side clear um, if you do need to, you know, video and that kind of thing. So that's the kind of working environment that I work in. And the other thing that's quite important really is the amount of light you can throw onto this. And this is how I do it. So here in the railway room, I tend to use one of these a lot. This is a 20 watt, uh, 6,000 Kelvin LED light. And as you can probably see, it's on the bright side. Um, and when I shoot these videos, I normally turn this uh, video, uh, turn this video, I usually turn this light onto the background to throw a bit of light behind me. Anyway, um, for working underneath the baseboards or whatever, this is the kind of light to go for. It's an LED and therefore it gives off minimal heat. If you go to use tungsten or those halogen lamps, I mean, they're clearly a fire risk and we're back to the fire extinguisher, but this is um, a nifty pit of kit. Um, for shooting these videos, I have two LED panels mounted up on the ceiling. Um, and if I'm going to do any close work in this room, I must confess, I just bring those panels right down so I can see what I'm doing. But um, that's my go-to choice um, in and around. But if I'm in the house, then I shall use this. And this is an old school kind of, so if you can see that. I tell you what. I'll plug it in. Dreadful. Old school kind of thing. Um, it's a, a neon, a circular neon tube. And uh, underneath it, or on top of it, should, I should say, there's a magnifying glass. And therefore, you can throw some light onto your work um, as you're doing it. I don't particularly like using this in the railway room, but in, in the house, when I use that humbrol table, um, it's absolutely ideal. And um, if I'm just going to use, if I just need the light source, then this is great because again, it doesn't give off any heat. So it's an ideal thing to use. Um, and when I bought it, it comes with a spare tube. So uh, that's kind of uh, good to go. Next thing I use is something to enhance my sight because um, <laughs> I'm 61. I can't, I have to use reading glasses. These are now, uh, three times magnification things get worse and worse don't they so i do use one of these uh visors and as much as a dick you might look when you're wearing it you can put your reading glasses underneath it and to be perfectly honest it's made oh it's optivisor it says on the inside and it is absolutely brilliant it really is the good stuff um, you can get interchangeable lenses i just bought the lenses that came with it and it seems to work perfectly well. Um, and I believe now you can actually get one with LED lights mounted on the sides, which um, I would have probably bought rather than this, but I'm not gonna go and get rid of this now just because I can buy one with lights on. But this um, really, really does help. Um, and you're kind of still in the safety bracket here of you know, fire extinguishers, first aid kits, cutting mats, and all the rest of it. Um, this enables you to do the job and use your tools properly. Right, that's all that stuff out of the way. Let's get down to some cutting stuff. 
So it's not always necessary to spend a fortune and hopefully you have some of this gear ready to hand um, and you don't need to go and buy model railway specific bits and bobs. So Stanley knife, ideal isn't it for the heavy stuff, cutting card, cutting up bits of sleeper, bits of, tr bits of uh, plastic and all the rest of it. Great bit of kit, can't really knock it. Next down the line I think really is, is the old modeler's modeling knife as it were um, and I think it was called Exacto was a company that used to make uh, a similar thing. Um, this is made by uh, Swan Morton and it comes with a nifty little um, protective sleeve and though the, the blades themselves are quite expensive so I invested in a box of 50 and these are size number 11 blades and from um, from forgot the name Squires it's £11.49 for 50 blades to fit this and it's kind of ideal um, rather than using a, a scalpel which is quite uh, difficult to hold at times this is the kind of way to go um, it's if of course you do need a scalpel I have his two I use um, this meteor handle is much better than the old traditional surgeon scalpel Surgeon scalpel, it's quite scary, isn't it? Really, um, and the blades, and the blades are quite cheap. I mean, a pack of uh, non sterile blades, so don't use this for um, home surgery. Pack of blades, 85p, piece of cake, in it. So, these are the kind of easy stuff to go for for cutting up uh, card kits, um, bits of plastic, and that. If, of course, you want to cut a bit of track, you could use these. I can't say this word. Exeron cut track cutters and um, these are quite effective um, you just need to know which side of the track to use the good side of the track should be on this side and the waste piece will go uh, into the, the jaws there um, and I tend to cut them vertically and then just trim them with a file um, and you might think these are a great idea however made by <laughs> Exeron same company is this little pair of cutters but these are sprue cutters now for heaven's sake what on earth made this company make a very very similar pair of cutters in exactly the same colored handles is beyond me this is an act of gross stupidity and now i must clearly put some blue tape on these or whatever because i will end up one day ruining these by trying to cut through pico code 100 track so I do, do try to keep them apart. These stay at the desk, these stay with the layout. Talking of layouts and doing your cutting there, well, this isn't the ideal tool I find for cutting um, track. This is, and this is what we would call, you know, kind of a, a rotary cutter. And many a time in my videos, people have asked me where I get this uh, steel diamond impregnated cutting disc from. Well, it will be of no surprise for you to know that it comes from Squires and you can get these for under a fiver. In fact, I will just check on that. No, I'm wrong. There it is. It's £6.99 and that's uh, one of these diamond discs. They are really are the dog's doodah. They are absolutely stunning. Um, and um, this, uh, this old Dremel type um, tool, let's call it that, um, was actually made by Maplins. You can't buy them anymore. It is, re it is really, really good. One drawback is um, it's got a power lead and there is a new Dremel available um, with a high powered battery and that is um, much better. But I can't really justify uh, buying the new Dremel um, whilst this one still works perfectly well. On the subject of Dremel, this is a uh, Dremel model 7700. Um, it's a little battery operated Dremel and it's got a 7.2 volts. As it happens, the battery is flat as usual, um, high, low and all the rest of it. And as you can see at the end of it, I have just popped in an Allen key because the only thing that this thing is use useful for is actually stirring paint. It is a complete and utter waste of money sorry dremel but there we go it is unless it, i just bought a duff one um, and if you have one that works perfectly then i'm sure you'll leave a, a comment uh, 
below but this is a complete and utter waste of money absolutely ridic ridiculous waste of money you know i don't know why i didn't send it back to be perfectly honest so what's next well we're in a cutting mood um, i do use a couple of the old saws with interchangeable handles i can't remember what make these are but i get them from a model shop such as antics um, and i do use these to cut rails if i can't quite get in there with my uh, large dremel um, and i will mention that something else about that cutting disc is, again is because it's such a large disc when you use it unlike the ones with the smallest where you kind of have to go in at an angle this one you because it's so big you don't it just goes in square and you've got less uh, far less tidying up to do um, but if this thing, thing shattered and you haven't got anything any eye protection on you could clearly lose an eye so you know as i said before buy buy your your protective stuff before you embark on buying um, high powered cutting gear what else do I do with cutting? Well, um, the other thing is when you've finished cutting, you need to do a bit of filing. Where's the files? Can't see them. There they are. Um, and this is a little pack of five files. And the reason I buy a little pack of five is ideal because when I go to wrap up, if I can't find one, then I know that, you know, I need to go, go hunting for it. If you just leave them loose, you will end up losing them all one, slowly one at a time. But if they come in a pack of five or whatever, you get the variety. And of course, you can see if you're losing one. Um, so it's ideal on sprues, filing them down, all the rest of it. And then um, I do embark on sanding sticks after that just to, uh, to, to make them ideal. So that's the kind of way I do. Next thing I want to talk about is holding things. So if you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll have seen me using these things here, which are known as a helping hand. And I think these retail at something like six pounds a go. And there's a little magnifying glass, a couple of um, adjustable crocodile clips, clip, crocodile clips, crocodile clips, and they are absolutely ideal. I'd underestimated these things for years. I think I got one free with a soldering iron or something, and it stayed on the shelf. But they really are good, especially for things like soldering, where you invariably kind of need three hands, hence a helping hand. So you've got your the item you want to solder, the item you want to solder it to, and the soldering iron, and your solder. And when you put these things uh, together, it does work. These are well worth the money. If you, you know, see these kicking around, these are the sort of thing you'll need to buy. Helping hand. Brilliant. Suggested by a friend of mine. Um, were these um, <laughs> eBay cheap and cheerful Chinese clips and I think on eBay these are £3.75 for 50 uh, clips and what they comprise of is basically a kind of a, a barbecue skewer and a crocodile clip with a sleeve and if you stick them together with a bit of super glue this is what you end up with and all you need to do then is to cut this down and here's some I haven't cut down which you may find amusing and I've put them into a crib board and if you're old enough to know what cribbage is my mother and father used to play it but I bought this Wills Woodbines obviously it's the cigarette company um, crib board at a car boot sale for something like 50p and then in all seriousness I will cut these down considerably but if you want to um, when you're painting figures or whatever this is an absolutely a gem of an item really because you can pop your little figure in the jaws um, put it in you know like, like the hell as I said about the helping hand um, you know if you want to sort of do it like that and then your little figure is here if you can see that okay um, put your little figure here um, and then do your painting obviously for me I would have the light in and my little um, what do you call it the visor on to see what I'm doing um, and then when you're finished with it because of the last thing we normally do is obviously throw it on the floor is pop it into your little crib board and stack it away to dry absolutely brilliant but doing things like figures for uh, coaches or cattle and all that kind of stuff ideal great way of holding stuff another way of course is to use blue tack um, and this is quite a simple straightforward way of doing things you know especially with electronics if you want to um, solder a few resistors together onto a board um, then you can just punk it on the floor on the floor on the desk um, and then uh, hold it still with blue tack 
Uh, there is another thing that's called black tack that you may or may not be aware of. Black tack and blue tack are kind of similar, except black tack is far more sticky or aggressive, uh, far more permanent, let's say. And if you want to put your speakers into a loco and you want to hold it still, don't use blue tack. If it's going to be permanent, use black tack. It's far more reliable. So that's another way of holding stuff. Of course, we all use, um, well, we might all use clamps, um, but these are cheap and cheerful clamps. They're ideal. They just sort of whisk up together. So I use several of those type of things. And also, don't underestimate these type of clamps. They come in packs from B&Q or whatever. And I've even got, excuse me, if this is the baby clamp, then clearly, oh God, that's, this must be the daddy clamp. I mean, they are, you know, really, really uh, good stuff. But if you're sticking baseboards and stuff together and glue, then you do need these and you don't need to spend a fortune. Go to a and q um, and buy them uh, you know, in the sale or whatever. Good stuff. They can, I think you get um, too large, too medium, too small. And you can also buy a sort of a pack of 10 of these tiny ones. And you're probably bet cheaper buying them from B&Q than anywhere else. So that's what I do to do my basic gripping. Um, a couple of other bits worth pointing out. And that's tweezers because I never realised there were so many different sorts of tweezers. Let's see if you can see this okay if I zoom right in. So there's an ordinary pair of tweezers. A bit similar to those really, but they're a kind of a have a kind of a spade end. You can see that. So this pair of tweezers, they are sprung together in the closed position. So when I release them, that's when the jaws go together. So they're ideal um, as a clamp really as much as a pair of tweezers. Um, so it's worth having a little pair of those um, because invariably when you want them, um, you won't have any. So if you see them going cheap in a little model shop or um, as I've done is I've uh, intimidated my young daughters to buy me stuff for Christmas like uh, vouchers from, uh, from Antics because there's quite a few of those shops around the country. Um, they give me vouchers and I go and, uh, and buy what I want rather than finding myself with... Um, unsuitable Father's Day presents. We all know it happens. Um, the other thing is these little magnetic clamps and um, I've used them in videos before and they're ideal for clamping card kits or plastic kits together at right angles and these these are very good um, and I think they're made by a, a Romanian company. Let's have a look. Oh sorry, made in Turkey by Prozis electronic that's proses as in p-r-o-s-e-s -E i'll try to leave a link in the uh, in the bits below um, i don't know where else you can get them um, but i'm sure you can go um, online so proses p-r-o-s-e-s -E these really are good stuff being magnets of course keep them away from um, things like electronic chips if you're in sound locus and that kind of stuff these things don't necessarily go well together Next thing, I thought we'd talk about drills. I use uh, two drills, really. I use a small drill and a large drill. And if I show you the small drill first, um, I'm not a lover of these things. If I can go in close a minute. So this is a drill known as pin vice. And obviously this thing revolves. And all you do is hold that in your hand and you twist it. And it works very, very well. Um, the only thing I don't like about these is the fact that when you want to change the drill, um, you may have to change the collet because different drills require different size collets. And if I just whip that off, you can see that this, this one here has a different size collet at the other end. Um, they're a little bit of a, a pain, but well, what are you supposed to do really? Um, there isn't really an option by buying several pin vice drills to accommodate, uh, you know, keep the drills in them permanently as it were. Um, yeah, a bit of a pain. And I always then get stuck on which size drill is in the drill. Does that make sense? And to that end, I have a, um, a micrometer, a little cheapy micrometer. And if you just turn it on and then you zero it, and then with the jaws, this comes in at, no, I'm in inches, then we go into millimeters, zero. And then when I pop it across there, 
it's a 0.97, so that's going to be a one mil drill. Um, but the micrometers are very useful to have because you invariably get your drills mixed up. So that is my small drill. However, I have um, its larger brother. This beast from Makita. I'm a strong believer in the words of buy cheap, you buy twice. Um, and this clearly isn't cheap and it's the only one I've got. Um, my Black & Decker, also known as Black & Wrecker, gave up years ago um, because the batteries wouldn't hold a charge. This battery goes from flat to fully charged in under 20 minutes and you get an array of drills and all the rest of it to go with it. But for underneath your baseboards and everything else, if you're going to buy one, um, save your money and buy a good one because you really really don't want to make a mistake as i did went and buy my shiny red black and decker one and it was absolutely pants get yourself a decent one and don't make the same mistakes as i, as I have so what other mistakes have i made well i needed a set of instrument screwdrivers and i went along to a well-known shop b and q and i bought myself some and i think this came in a pack of six or eight and absolute waste of time you really 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 do get what you'll pay get what you pay for whereas this is made by a company called Weera that's w-e-r-a and these screwdrivers here are really I, I can't name a better better make really um uh, working as a photographer the um when you take cameras apart you really don't want to you know mess up the 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 threads or the or on the uh uh, heads of screws and the same to said with, with locomotives um, these things are ideal and you can get them in a uh, in a sexy pack of six um, and they clearly are not going to be cheap and then uh, also i want to speak about is um what you call it is squares is a little square and there's a big square and these are kind of really really uh, useful things and as you invest in your model railway you will find that um, these sort of things are, are ideal um, these for putting baseboards together and getting them right and obviously this piece here moves along if I can get the thing to free no I can't don't embarrass yourself anyway I, mean, I will do this yes um, obviously that then runs along there um, as required it's also got a, a level on it which is quite useful whereas this really is a, a highly machined um, piece of steel um, but squares again are not vital but very useful tools 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 to the railway modeler the last thing I wanted to cover um, in basic tools really is wire strippers and um, I tended to kneel at the altar of these adjustable jaw ones and um, I'm sure you've seen these and you adjust this uh, screw um, and obviously the more you wind it in the bigger the hole gets and then you can lock it in position with a wing nut, poke your piece of wire through, pull it and then if you examine the uh, sleeve that you removed to make sure there's no cable left in the sleeve then you know you're done okay. Until of course I came across this little nifty beast known as uh, an RS382-2847 um, uh, RS I think really is a kind of an upmarket uh, supplier but if I was to pop this in here and I can literally um, snip away one millimeter of insulation now, I don't know if this is in focus so you can see it right there but this really is um, a champion of uh, of wire strippers um, clearly it's not going to be a cheap one and they really are an excellent pair of wire strippers well I'm afraid time has gotten away from me today really I have to wrap this up because this is becoming yet another epic I'm afraid what I haven't touched on this one is specialist tools on using back-to-back -to -back gauges um, multimeters, uh, track setters, all the other sort of um, more in-depth model railway tools rather than the basic tools that I've spoken about today. I'm sure there's a few of you out there that disagree with everything I've said, which is great because if you leave your comments below, then 
we can uh, we can all read the comments and perhaps we'll all learn something and people won't fall into saying this, some of the mistakes that I've made um, because you found um, a better way of doing things which is much appreciated. If of course you did uh, enjoy the video then please leave a comment it's always nice for me to to read uh, and, and see what you've got to say and of course I will do my utmost to read sorry don't to read but to reply to every comment you leave. So there we go. Um, I will make a part two on tools at some stage um, but I've got a bit of building to do on the layout because I had another rethink and it looks like I'm going to put in a kind of flyover um, on the track and have another little rethink on the track, uh, the track plan. When will I ever learn? I'm, uh, I'm just about to zip away on holiday so uh, hopefully I'll have a little bit of sunshine and, uh, and I'll get back to you in two weeks today. In the meantime, of course, um, I thank my patrons. Please, please become a subscriber. It kind of motivates me to push out more videos. And you know you've got time to watch the video that's appearing here and here. And in the meantime, stay safe. Have a great time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.